Okay, let's start the webinar now. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this SC300 session. Uh, myself, Archie Desai, I'm your host for this uh, session. Uh, guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We'll be there to help you out. Then moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor, that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is an India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question. We bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also, we educate, advi advise, implement, and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is persona-based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental uh, certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. Uh, in fundamental certification, we are providing you five types of certification that is AJ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are providing you many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. In expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, AZ400. Guys, also we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. So cert certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under the ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Punekars. Emerging Technology Community for Suratkas, Azure Tech Community for Nagpurkas. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app in your device and there you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow Code of Conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note, participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Then today's speaker for this uh, training, that is uh, Komal Sharma. She is Microsoft Certified Trader and currently work with Synergetics as a trainer consultant. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop. Then coming with the self-learning plan, we are providing you complimentary learning achievement badge. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you if you have any question, you can submit your question in our feedback form. Then knowledge and assessment. Uh, by before end of this session, we are providing you assessment link. You can give your test and check your knowledge. Then we are providing you SC300 learning achievement badge. Here you can see the step and uh, the, just you have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter uh, and YouTube for upcoming webinar and workshop. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. She will continue ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Archie. Hello everyone. Good morning. This is Komal Sharma. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so I hope my screen is visible. Okay. So my name is Komal Sharma. I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer. 
and I have handled my engagement on enterprise architecting and learning consultancy solution. And I have uh, uh, achieved different certifications for Microsoft Power Platform. Microsoft 365 services and Microsoft security solution, including the expert level of the certification. I have delivered session for different my national and international client. OK. So that was my introduction. Now as like just wanted to have a, a small introduction from you side, like if you can just put into the chat just a uh, two line about yourself like or uh, and like what the designation you are having or if you have any experience about SE certification or any of the fundamental certification that you have already done. So can you please just quickly type into the chat about yourself so that I will be having idea about your current uh, knowledge level. Yes, guys, I'm waiting for your response. Just like two line will be enough. You can write your designation. You can write your uh, current experience with your security services or any SC certification if you have already done. Like let's say you have done with SC 900, so you can type that. Or if you are totally new to uh, securities and all, so you can write that I'm new. OK. That's great, Reshma. OK, so Rajesh is already done with EZ104 and 304. OK, good. OK, great. OK, so Sudarshan, you are already done with SC 400. So uh, Sudarshan, what you are looking for uh, SC 300 like. OK. Any like a special requirement or like. Just to have idea what is this SC 300 is all about. OK, OK, got it. What about others? OK, so Pratik is done with AZ 900. Great. Awesome. So what I can see that you guys are pretty much experienced about the different other certifications. OK, so today we are going to like uh, OK, so we are going to start with SC 300, but apart from SC 300, there are other certification. So I will let you know about other certifications also that will help you to decide your uh, certification journey. OK, so let's go ahead. OK, so when you are in your security or when you are new to security, you know, sometimes it's um, difficult, you know, for some participants. They have the question like what certification we should start with or if we are done with this certification, what should be our next goal, right? So here like there are some other security certification. That is going to help you out to decide your journey and your role. See these Microsoft certifications are role based certification. OK, you are performing some role and some designation in your current organization. Let's say you are new to security and you have no idea where to start and how to start. So the best certification for you is SC 900. SC 900 is a fundamental certification for securities. OK. 
and here you will be having idea about the other certification. So this uh, is having basically the overview of all the other certification, like a briefing. You can say what is this identity and access management or solution is all about. What is security compliance and identity? What is the capability of Microsoft security solution and Microsoft compliance solution? So that all overview you are going to get with SV 900. So as this fundamental exams give you the enough knowledge to decide what should be your next role based certification. So here you have three type of certification at Microsoft. You have a fundamental certification associate level certification and expert level certification like MS 900, PL 900, SE 900. These all are the fundamental. All the 900 series are the fundamental. There is other the role based certification we have like if you are from Azure, OK, and uh, you are good in Azure and you are more concerned about the Azure security. So here you have the certification EZ 500 that is Azure Security Engineer Associate. It is an associate level certification. Here you will be having idea that how you can control the security and uh, threat protection for your organization, including that you would be able to manage identity and access and protect your data applications and workload which is there on cloud. Including this, you will be having the experience of your, uh, you know, how we can protect the hybrid environment. Then there was a certification that was MS 500. This MS 500 is no more available because this exam was retired on um, June 30th. And uh, this was Microsoft 365 security administrator like uh, I'm including this because some of you may be having this uh, certification in your hand. So just to inform you that this certification is no more available. Now there is SC 200 certification. This is again a role based certification. So if your role is for the security operation analyst, then this is the best certification for you. Here in this certification, you will be having idea how you can migrate threats using Microsoft 365 Defender, migrating threats using Microsoft Defender for cloud and mitigate threats using Microsoft Sentinel. So it's all about threat management. Coming to the next certification that is again a role based or the associate level certification that is your SC 300. So in your organization, if you are like, you know, looking for identity and access administration, then this is the best certification for you. Here you are going to work with Microsoft Entra. So Microsoft Entra that was earlier known as Azure Active Directory. Most of the uh, most of you must be you know, you know uh, know it as a Azure AD. So Azure AD as this platform is for managing the identity and accesses. So this certification where you are going to you know implement identities, implement the authentication, access management access management for application. You can plan and implement the identity governance in Azure AD. SC 400 SC 400 is your role based certification that will help you to prepare for the information protection. There are many organization. They are you know, concerned about protecting their information the information they work with like the banking and all. So they do not want their information should be shared or some organization. They want their information should be protected with the competitors. OK, so this certification, this course will let you know you that you can how you can protect your information not from the external, but from internals also. Right, so it's all about the data loss prevention policies, information protection and information governance. So these all are the role based certification. So you can start your journey from SE 900 
then choose your role based certification that may be your uh, SE 200. It may be uh, AZ 500. It may be SE 300 or SE 400. Choose your role wisely. OK, and then choose your certification. It's not compulsory that you have to complete all the certification. No, choose any of the certification. Then go to the expert level certification to prove your expertise in security. OK, so for SE 100, this is the expert level certification. And once you clear the certification, you will be cyber security architect expert. Here you are going to have idea how you can design a zero trust strategy and architecture, evaluate governance, risk compliance, technical strategies and securities, design securities for infrastructure, design a strategy and for your data and application. So these all are the certification like this is the set as the uh, certifications. Anyone any questions so far? Any doubt related with any certification? Or still you have any question like to decide your certification journey? Yes, anyone? Nothing guys, you can just feel free to put your doubt or question into the chat. OK, I will be, uh, you know, frequently visiting to this chat and will answer you for the same. So if you have any doubt, any question, you can put it into the chat box. OK, so I hope this certification part is pretty much clear. Now let's understand about this at SC uh, 300 course. So this SC 300 course. This course is uh, like uh, for identity and access administrator. Who are planning to uh, take the associate certification exams who are performing the identity and access administrators task in their day to day job. And this course would be helpful to an administrator or an engineer that want to you know specialize uh, in providing identity solution and access management system for any Azure based solution. This course explore that how you can design, implement and operate an organization's identity and access management system by using Microsoft Entra ID. Here you will learn to manage tasks such as providing um, secure authentication, authorization and access to enterprise solution. You will also learn to provide seamless experience and self service management capabilities for all users. And finally, you will learn to create adaptive access and governance of your identity and access management solution and ensuring you can troubleshoot, monitor and report on your environment. <coughs> So once you are done with SD 300 course, OK, today you are attending this course. You will be having good idea about this SD 300, right? But as uh, like uh, you need to clear the exam to become the Microsoft certified identity and access administrator, you need to register yourself for uh, SD 300 exam, OK? And uh, this exams is like 1000 marks out of that you should be having at least uh, 700 marks. That is a passing mark. Once you clear the exam, you will be Microsoft certified. OK, and this certification will be added to your Microsoft certification profile. Now for the preparation point of view that SD 300 exams. These all are the four main areas that you need to cover. The first one that is implement and manage user identities. Here you will understand that how you can create the user, how you can manage the user, creating the groups and all. Then 
you can understand about the second and uh, study area that is implementing the authentication and access management like as a user as a team what are the different authentication method right well, like uh, how they can access to any resources of your organization then coming to plan and implement workload identities and finally plan and implement identity governance now percentage return at the right side of the screen it's it's just like a uh, the questions that you are uh, likely to get from this area. Here are some uh, important links that I will take you that will help you to for the preparation. SC 300 exam. You all can refer these links. Here this is for SE 300 exam where you will be having good idea about this exam is all about. And here you will be having this link for SE 300 exam preparation video. That is uh, these videos are going to help you to prepare for the SE 300 exam. This is SE 300 study guide. So in this SE 300 study guide, we will be having a detailed information about this exam. OK. If any, uh, you know, changes was done. So here you have a change log. Review the skills measure prior to January because this uh, before January uh, there was a bit change, you know. And after January uh, 31st, there of uh, some you know, modules were changed. So those who are uh, planning to renew the exam or now when they are planning for the exam, please go through this change log and notice what are the changes that was done. There is no ma uh, like uh, major changes, but there are hardly just one or two small changes. OK. After that, here you will be having detail about each module that I have just discussed the four uh, skills, the major skills that you have to consider over there. The first one that was implementing and manage user identities. Here you have to uh, cover these areas like how you can configure and manage entra tenant, create, configure and manage identities. Implementing and manage identities for external user and tenants and implementing and manage hybrid identities. Then this is about the second study area where you will be, uh, you know, uh, you need to study for planning and implementing identities. OK, in Microsoft Entra that is for user authentication. You can plan, implement and manage Entra for conditional access and manage risk by using Entra identity protection. So you just can go through to this link and have the detail of idea about this studies area. Moving back. Here you have an important link for practice assessment like uh, if you feel like you are ready for the exam, but to have an experience about the examination or what type of questions you are going to experience, so you can take a free practice assessment. OK. And those who are totally new to this uh, exam, like Microsoft exam, they haven't got any examination yet. So for that, this is a link for exam sandbox. This will give you the feel of real exam environment. How this, uh, you know, online examination environment looks like how your exams are being launched, what type of questions are uh, likely to get and how to answer for the same. OK, so those who are new to this examination platform, please go through and refer these important links. When when you will scroll down here, you have an option to schedule your exam. Here, like right now, it is by default selected as US. You can just type for your country, India. 
and you will be having the cost for the same and you can schedule your exam. You can schedule your exam uh, online also like sitting at your home. You can give the exam. And you can schedule it as per you know your convenient date and timing. When you will scroll down here, you have all the learning path in detail it is giving. OK, so you can just refer all the modules. Then I have uh, one more link. Let me check if I have shared or not. Yeah. That is. SC 300 course link. So whatever I'm just going to cover today that is from this SC 300 course only. So this course link resembles the uh, study areas that we have uh, to cover for the preparation of this exam. You can just uh, go through the topic wise, OK? And here you have the detailed study material about the same. OK, so that was all about the important uh, link that you can refer. Uh, Shri Mali, like see if you are totally new to SC certification. OK, so prerequisite if you are like for the fundamental SE um, 900, there is no fundamental. OK, and like for the beginner level, like the beginner level, as I said, it's a fundamental SE 900. So there is no prerequisite for the same. OK, and if you are going to appear for SE 300, SE 200, like all the role based certification. It is like if you, uh, you know, have a good idea about the fundamental. Or if you are done with SE 900, it is surely going to help you out for the examination, but it doesn't mean you cannot register for the exam. No, it's not like that. But yes. For SE 900. There is no prerequisite as a 300. Fundamental knowledge, of course, going to give you a base. For project manager, what is the basic certification? Uh, Devras, uh, this uh, session is not for the project management. This is for the securities. So if you have any question related with the securities and security related certification, you can put into the chat box. Anything else, guys? Any questions? OK, so let's go move ahead. So I'm going to start my first module. So let's start with the first module here. We are going to explore what is identity and Microsoft and ID. See this session. Uh, I will be giving you uh, the overview of all the topic. OK, I will be explaining each and everything. Plus this session includes a demo also. OK, so I will take it in the session in this way that first I will be taking entire the overview part and all. OK, and then uh, the next part in the session, I will be taking the demo. OK, so once the uh, first part of uh, my module is done, like first module is done, then I will be giving you the demo for the same. So this is how I will be taking the session. So during the session, we will be uh, taking the break also. OK, so first break I will be taking by 1130. OK, and then we will be taking a break for lunch around 1.30, 1.45. Then uh, again uh, around 4 o'clock, we will be taking again a break for 10, 15 minutes for tea and coffee. 
So this is how the session flow will be. So in our first module, we are going to explore about identities. What are the different identity and administration concept? Authorization and authentication. Auditing and other identity concept. So after this module, you will be having idea what are the different uh, identity capabilities of Microsoft Entra? What is zero trust principle and what is the basic capability of authentication and authorization? Now let's first start about identity. So before I start, anyone can you please let me know what do you mean by identity? Anyone? Or can you guess what is identity when you are working with Entra or Azure AD? Anyone? Just one line will be enough for me. What do you mean by identity? Users, devices, okay. User identification, okay, very good. Sudarshan is saying users and computer, perfect. See, guys, uh, if we talk about a real real life, right? In real life, we all are having some identity, right? Like Reshma, if I ask you, what is your identity? So how you are going to prove? You are going to let me know, Komal, this is my name. This is my address, right? And when I ask you to prove your identity, so you may be uh, having a PAN card or Aadhaar card or maybe the driving license or you must be using a, your passport, right? This is what your identity, you hold your identity. Even though you will say that, yes, Komal, I am Reshma, but how I am going to believe that you are Reshma? Or if you are going to any, you are going to visit somewhere, you are traveling, you have to, you know, buy a new home or a vehicle, you have to prove your identity. You need a identity certification. So we all need identity. Correct. So as we users uh, like, no, uh, I will not say user, but we human being need identity. So similarly, whatever the vehicles we are using, right? Our car, scooty, two wheelers, that vehicles is having the identity. Every vehicle is having a unique identity. I hope you all you are uh, agree with, with me, right? Our home where we are living right now, that home is having an identity that is having an address, right? And we have a paper, a document for the same. The mobile phone in your hand, it is having an identity, correct? The laptop that you all are using right now for attending the session, or some of you may be attending it via mobile phone, that is having a unique identity. Correct. Similarly, the same concept is used when you are on a virtual world. As we are in a real world and holding some identity. Similarly, when we are on a uh, virtual world, when we are on cloud, we all are having a identity. So in virtual world, it may be we, it may be a users who are users, users who are uh, on cloud users who are um, using, uh, you know, some cloud services, users who have to prove their identity that yes, I'm Sudarshan, I'm Reshna, I'm Komal, I'm Kranti, right? So whenever you have to access virtually any services, you have to prove your identity. Like right now you guys are attending this session. How I know that in my session there is someone who is Vikas, there is someone who is Nita, there is someone who is Devraj, right? So maybe you have registered somewhere and now you are using your name to attending this uh, for attending this session. Uh, though I cannot see your faces, but I can see your name. I can identify you. When I have to call, I can call. Yes, Deepak, can you answer me? Or Natraj, can you, uh, Ashwin, can you answer me? 
or please type your query into the chat. This is how we are going to communicate with, uh, with each other when we are virtually meeting with each other, right? So the same concept we are going to understand when it's all about the virtual uh, virtual world, okay? So when it is identity in Microsoft, so this Microsoft follow the funda of zero trust. So zero trust is what like let's say. <clears throat> for example, this session is what that you guys are attending. I will say I do not trust you who are who is Reshma or who is Harish. I do not know you. Right, so how I am going to trust you. I say that first prove that you are an authorized user to attend this training. Right, or let's say you have registered yourself for the exam, right? Like SC 300 exam, you are going to register yourself. You have paid the fees, but how you are going to prove that you are the person who have registered? So for that, when you are going to appear for the exam, you need to show your identity. You need to give your identity proof. You have to, you know, open the camera and whatever the identity proof you have submitted, they are going to match it. That is it really like the person who have registered for the exam or not? Right? So similarly in Microsoft, it follow the funda of zero trust. It says that don't trust anyone. So now you may ask me, Komal, when we are not going to trust anyone, how we are going to work? Right and especially in the organization when we are not going to trust anyone, how we are going to work, how we are going to share the information. Right, so here Microsoft says that don't trust anyone, but verify everything. So verification is very important. Though you are working in your organization, still there are many organizations who are in hybrid mode or they are still like working from home. They have that WFH uh, work culture, right? Their employees may be like offices in Mumbai and then employees is maybe from any other uh, state of the country. He may be working from Delhi. He may be working from Bangalore, right? So how I am going to trust on my employees that this is really my employees, how I'm going to, uh, you know, provide them or share them the important information of my organization. So for that, this Microsoft says that don't trust anyone, though he is a very, you know, close friend of you, a <laughs> very, uh, very, very, you know, uh, what I say. A very hardworking employees of you. When it's a virtual world, don't trust. Just verify. It may be there is an unauthorized user with the name of Harish who is trying to access the information of the organization. So how my organization is having idea whether it's a, a Harish Kumar or whether it is any unauthorized user who may be using Harish identity, right? So when it is virtual world, you have to be very cautious about your security. And in term of identity, there are nowadays, you know, there are many threats that are happening. People are using fake identity. They are using the identities just to make you fool, just to try to get your information, leak your information, get to know about your information about your accounts or credits and so on. So Microsoft says that don't trust anyone, but verify everyone. And when you are Though you are verifying, verification is done. So whatever the privileges you are giving to any user, it should be given as much as it is needed. It's just like, uh, for example, you are in your home right now or just imagine your real organization. OK, in your organization, you have buildings, right? Buildings is having the boundaries. Any anonymous person cannot enter to your home or to your office, right? Let's say your home. Are you going to allow anyone to your home? No, right? Only the person you know or you trust, you only allow them to enter your home, 
addressed for uh, others for anonymous person you have windows you have grill you have you know security door so that anonymous person cannot come to your home they cannot enter and the person you know okay only you are going to allow now still when you're going to allow someone depend what is the need of that person is she your friend is she a courier boy is he a, a you know a very good family member okay he may be your relative or it may be just the person you know and just for some work he has visited to your home as per their role you are going to give him or her access inside your home the access may be limited to the kitchen access may be limited to the center room access may be lim access may be to the entire home just imagine the same concept we are going to use when it is on cloud so you are going to verify the identity you are going to use the least privileges only allow them to use the information or the area that they are need for and assume breach means you need to assume that yes something you know something can be happen if someone can you know just uh, leak your information there is a threat every time you have to just assume breach every time then only you will be more concerned about the security part now once the zero trust is done now coming to the identity part so here in this identity you have uh, uh, identities that is your decentralized identity concept here you have b2b identities business to business business to consumers right and customers and verifiable credentials we are going to discuss everything in detail now coming to the action that is what the authentication then authorization administer administer who is going to you know manage all the things how you are going to authorize your user okay then the usage usage means like how you are going to secure uh, then the service are paid or not okay that is about the licenses uses of licenses that you need to use and then finally maintenance how you are going to protect okay then if there is a threat how it is detected and then how it should be respond this is how the all the things are going to be happen in your entra so when it's about the zero trust so the classic approach was the organization or uh, used to follow that whatever the things you have everything you need to lock right when the things were not on cloud when we were not virtually working right we used to visit to the offices and all they were securing the thing or protecting that thing was not much challenging right because we used to go to visit to the offices and we were having uh, you know desktop uh, uh, pcs and all and when we are leaving the organization we cannot carry the information with us everything is there inside that machine only but now the time has changed especially after the corona you ha all have observed lots of changes that now we are um, like we are having the concept of you know um, kind of a um, distributed identity decentralized identities okay where your identity is not at the one location right as we all are working virtually we are allowing the people to use your own devices like in my organization i am working from home right and i am using my device but i am working for my organization i am using some of my organization important information some document so how my organization is going to keep an eye on me that whether i am going to use the information uh, you know correctly or not whether i am not sharing the information to any other party right so this is what there is a concept of zero trust don't trust anyone 
OK, just verify everything. So now the concept is that zero trust because I do not know whether my my organization do not know whether the Komal Sharma is uh, using her laptop and what is she doing with the information. So they have to make sure that their information is always secure. It's always protected. So here there is what the concept of zero trust principle used. So this underlying principle that provide the foundation of the zero trust principle. So that is verify explicitly. So always authenticate and authorize based on all available data points. For example, user identity. Who is that user? So for the identity, how I'm going to prove my identity that whenever I have to access any information and all I'm going to log in. My organization has provided me the login ID, OK, and I'm using that login ID with my password. And of course, that password only I know. So whenever I'm going to log in to any information to any account, my my organization will be having idea. Yes, Komal has signed into that time. She has used that services, so they have all the information. Second is the location. From which location I have used that information. So I can see that I have login from Bangalore or I have login from UP or I have login from Delhi or Mumbai. What was the location? Then third, what was the device that you are using? Whether that device was a trusted device what was the device health? Whether that device was a compromised device. OK. Then you were having like uh, any service or workload data classification. OK, and anomalies. Then you have uh, you can use least privileges access. So least privilege access means just in time access means for example that access is needed for two hours why to need the access for the entire day or for you know forever it's just like you are allowing any user to work on any project okay and for that project you need to give him some access on some information or for some document so when you are giving him access give the access for the particular time after the time period, automatically the access will be removed. It's just like you are allowing any, uh, you know, um, for example, you need some uh, servicing for any of your appliances. OK, now there is a serviceman who have come. OK, for the servicing of your, let's say, washing machine. Now, how much time is needed? It may be hardly two hours, three hours, four hours. That's it, right? So just for that time period only you are going to allow him to sit into your home or work for your uh, that pur purpose, right? Not for that he is going to come with a bag and all and is going to stay at home. No, no. Similarly, the same concept is what that is used that when you are allowing someone to work for any information or you are going to give him some access, let's say admin access. So only give the access that is required for the particular time period. Then just enough access, just enough access. Like for example, I want uh, one of my employee to work as a help desk administrator. OK, so he must be having only access that is required for his role. Then you have the risk, risk based adaptive policies. Risk based adaptive policies that work like if there is any risk, what should be done? What policies that you are going to create for the same? And data protection against out of band vectors. OK, so how you are going to protect your data, how you are going to create the policies for the same and coming to the assume breach. So this minimize the blast radius for breaches and prevent literal movement by segmenting access by network users devices and app awareness so verify all sessions are encrypted from start to finish use analytic to get visibility and drive threat detection and improve defenses 
anyone any questions so far okay so a successful zero trust strategy it requires uh, you know flexible access to your application systems and data and at the same time organization must maintain the security for both users and your resources that they need to do for their jobs these steps that organization should follow to secure their identity infrastructure it include that how you are going to strengthen your credentials so if user in your identity system are using weak password and not strengthening them with multi factor authentication it is not a matter if or when you get compromised so just how often you will be compromised then reduce the attack right reduce the attack surface area to make life harder for hackers you need to eliminate using older less secure protocols and all you can limit the access entry uh, points and exercise more if a significant control on the administrative access of resources like let's say this is your organization information right this is a very sensitive area now there are always the attack from the customers these all are the attacks now how you are going to protect your information from this attacks and the threats as we have to assume breach every time right so here you need to create a area that is going to protect your environment a kind of a shield it just like when it is our home and we protect our home with a strong boundaries right with a lock with a securities security guard and all we have the security cameras we have the security gate grill on the window why we do these things because it's not like that every time you are going to like there is a threat uh, or someone is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, coming to you know for robbery and all it's not like that but the time you uh, make or build your home you decide all the securities uh, uh, for your home because we are assuming that yes there can be something happen some robbery can be done some thief can come right so we have to be re ready for the same we have to be prepared for the same so in term of identities you have to make sure that your all your identities they are using the strong passwords and all okay and with it's the end point or your data that you have to make sure that these all are protected you have to assume threat responses you have to reduce that actually reduce the cost and risk by reducing the time criminals have to embed themselves into your environment increase the awareness like you can use uh, auditing login right uh, like you have your administrator you can they can keep an eye for the activities that is going on into the, your organization what is the usage of any particular application how a user is going to sign in let's say i will share one experience with you guys like uh, i am a customer of a bank okay now as a customer you know bank uh, you know keep an eye on their customers activity let's say generally when we have to make a transaction there is a time period that you make a transaction let's say it's morning it may be morning 8 o'clock to night 11 o'clock 12 o'clock right generally at the night to uh, 2 am 4 p 4 am you never make any payments and all now recently what happened i was taking one of my uh, you know night session for my us client and i got free by uh, night 12:30 okay and then i had to make a payment 
suddenly one o'clock i just uh, i just thought of okay i should make the payment else next day i will forget so i tried to make the payment at the 1 pm that i remember that was 1 am that time and uh, suddenly i got the message that your, your payment was declined by your bank and i was thinking oh what happened why it happened why my account is not working and even the next day morning when i was trying to make the payment i was not allowed to do so i was just getting the message that you uh, you are not uh, you cannot make the payments because your bank is not allowing you for the same wait a minute yeah so that was the message i was frequently getting i was not at all able to make any payments then i uh, evening i got free and i called to my rm right so i asked that what happened the why i am not able to make the payment then you know the reason that i got from that person that ma'am there was some unusual activities that was observed from your from your account and uh, that's why uh, your account is freezed and i was surprised what was that activity that has ha that has happened so uh, then he told me there was a transaction that was tried at the night 1 o'clock so that was not the usual activity you never have or have done this kind of a payment at this timing so bank has considered that as a you know suspicious activity and they have freeze your account to just for the security purpose okay so for that if you have to unfreeze your account you need to visit to your nearest bank and then just you have to go and then you can say that yes this is not the activity any suspicious activity and this will be unfreeze so you know this is how like the things are happening nowadays because uh, you know when you are allowing the person see nowadays what is happening that every organization everywhere we are trying to give comfort to our customer now they do not have to visit anywhere sitting at your home you have your service right you can uh, order anything you can have any transaction even the person is from your country or outside your country you are able to talk you are able to share the information you are uh, able to send the money and so on when these facilities we as a customers are provided at the same time this is a biggest challenges for the companies nowadays to make the things secure to make the information secure to make the uh, you know money secure so that's why now these things are happening that even a small suspicious activity you know they will immediately detect and they will try to protect the account of the customer so this is what we have to make uh, as a security purpose like as a identity and access management um, administrator we have to think about the security of our identity of our organization identity of our organization uh, access management and so on so that any of the unauthorized person should not be able to make or, uh, or make any suspicious activity if it is so it will be detected now the zero trust at microsoft so here this is what uh, like that the capabilities that we get over there that at the heart of your zero trust strategy you need a policy engine to make a dynamic access decision for the trusted users at critical checkpoint access to network data and your application then our identity here in microsoft and access management and uh, endpoint this solution basically enable your organization to verify the users and devices explicitly such as devices health sign in risk any user has risk to make the informed decision that is based on access policies then microsoft information protection and cloud security right so information protection and cloud security that helps use a real time uh, sorry that helps uh, enforce the decisions and it protect the resources across entire environment in the real time and the networking solution it's 
give me a second. It's networking solution that helps the use real time threat protection to detect and respond to threat across your uh, environment. And finally, the XDR that is a Microsoft Sentinel, the XDR and SIEM solution that is able to help you to detect the uh, threats and respond to them automatically. And finally, this is your cloud adoption framework that will help any organization who are new to this environment, right? So for them, it is help. It is going to help them to adopt or uh, to the cloud environment, how they can uh, work or create or manage the identity on cloud. OK, and then simultaneously, then you have the work architecture framework. Let me just share the link quickly. This uh, link will give you the better idea about the cloud adoption and all. Yes, there are uh, some, uh, you know, you have to just create some policy like there are user risk policies. There are sign in risk policies uh, that you can create. Then there are conditional access policies that can be created. Zero trust principles. Uh, see, zero trust is what like you are not going to trust anyone, but you have to verify everyone. So how you are going to verify you are going to provide the identities to your user and whenever they have to uh, you know access any resources they have to prove their identity right the user authentication user authorization. OK. Guys, if you have any doubt any question please put into the chat box. I think I have shared the link. Now let's understand what is identity. So identity as I have uh, already discussed this identity is what identity may be a user identity may be a device identity may be your application. So when it's about the identity, so like if I am uh, you are going to ask me that Komal, who are you like how I am going to prove my identity or for example, let's say if I am going to apply for any service, if uh, for example, I have to buy a home, OK? Or if I even I have to buy a device or something like that, I have to prove my identity that yes, I'm an authorized user who is going to make a payment or if I'm going to buy a, a, a car or something like that, I have to prove my identity. Even though I have bought a ticket, but I am, when I'm traveling with a ticket, I have to prove that yes, I'm an authorized user who have bought this ticket, right? So this is what the identity. So identity when you have to prove yourself, that is your authentication. And though you have proved you have some limited permissions to do something. That is what the authorization. So I will give you a, one more example. Let's say. I have to travel somewhere like I have to uh, travel to Delhi, OK? And I have my uh, tickets, OK? I have my flight tickets. I have purchased that ticket. I have paid for the same. Now when I am having my tickets in my hand, there must be a date written for my traveling date, my timing, my flight number, and then my seat number of the boarding and all that is done. So finally, when I'm going to travel on that day, when I'm going to enter inside the airport, first thing I need to do, can you please let me know when you are going to 
uh, visit somewhere. OK, when you are traveling somewhere, when you are going to inside your uh, airport, what is the first thing that we need to do? Anyone? Get yourself verify. Correct. So you have to show your identity, right? There are some, uh, you know, guards. They are asking for your identities and your ticket. They will look at your face. Are you really the authorized user? If Komal Sharma, I am carrying a, a ticket in my hand. They will look to my identity. They will look to my Aadhaar card or PAN card, whatever it is, and they will match it to my face, right? And then they will look at the authorized ticket. Now, do I have the ticket in my hand or not? So now the identity is checked. Now ticket is checked. I am allowed to enter. Okay. Now I am inside the airport. What next? I have my flight schedule. Like let's say uh, today the date is 16 March. Now today evening I have a flight 5 o'clock. Okay. So now what's the next thing is going to be happen? Anyone? I have my ticket and all verification boarding pass. Okay, so boarding pass I have got it. Now what the worst thing is that I have to board the flight. Correct. I have my flight number and there are some, you know, uh, some screens where I can see. Okay, this is my flight. This is what the time and this is what the gate where I have to set. Correct the gate number. I have to stand to that gate number. Why it is so? Why you have to go and suppose to stand to that gate number only? Because your flight will come over there. It's not like that you have a ticket and you have verified your identity, but you can go anywhere. <laughs> My mood is changed. I do not want to go to Delhi. I want to go to, uh, you know, Bangalore. Is it possible? No. Why it is not possible? Anyone? I have ticket. But why I am supposed to catch that flight only? Because only the authentication is not enough. Authorization is enough. Yes, you are authorized visit. Yes, so this is what the authorization. Are you authorized for the same or not? So I am only authorized to sit into that flight only the flight number which is returned to your pass to your tickets. And including the seat also, you are only authorized to sit to that seat only. You cannot just go and visit. Oh, I want I want that window seat. No, <laughs> it's not like that. You can request for the same. That is a different thing. You will say, Komal, I like a window seat, and I will sit there only. <laughs> you can. That is a different thing. You can request to other co-passengers, and you can ask for that. But yes, you have a seat number written, and you have to sit to that seat number only. So this is what your authentication and authorization. You have authenticated yourself. You have proved your identity, but it doesn't mean you are authorized to each and every information or place to sit. Similarly, like in your organization, you are a, a authenticated employee. When you enter inside your office, you must be having a card, you know, an identity card that you must be, you know, used for punching or you must be showing to your uh, guard and all. OK, like in my security, when I have to enter to my building, I have a two punch. There is a biometric and I have to punch over there. Then only I am allowed to enter inside my building. Though I am an owner here, I have my flat, but it doesn't mean no. You have to prove your identity, but I'm only authorized to enter inside my home only. Right, so this is what the difference between the authentication and authorization. You are allowed to enter in your organization, but it doesn't mean that you can just go and visit and sit anywhere to any places. No, in your organization, as per your designation, as per your role, as per your uh, place, you are only allowed to sit there. Similarly, when it's a virtual world, though you have proved your identity, you have authenticated yourself, but you need to prove after that only the authorized information you are only allowed to access. For example, I am having the role of user administrator. So only I am authorized to change the password to manage the user. That's it. I do not have any other, uh, you know, permission to do the same. 
then the administration administration is what to be able to self administer an identity how you are going to uh, manage the identity or uh, what is the application that you are going to use or you are going to access what are the groups that you can become the part for okay what are the type of auth authentication that you can use okay any conditional access and title management that all comes under administration and then coming to the auditing part so you can focus what are the information that you can uh, that has been shared what is the application like i can have a log that the sign in log when my user have signed in and if you have configured any sign in policy or risk policy you can keep an eye that whether there was an assign in risk or not or there was a user risk or not okay what location like for example uh, i am visit i am living in mumbai okay or suddenly after 2 hour my sign in was uh, noticed from another country so is it correct no because i cannot frequently travel to any another country it means there is a risk there is someone who is trying to you know misuse my identity or my identity may be compromised so that all can be captured by auditing anyone any question so far now what is we have understood identities okay but now what is identity provider so identity provider is basically verifies the user identity using one or more authentication factor such as you can use your password you can use biometric okay you can use any other two like you can use the any application to prove your identity okay so an identity provider is often a trusted provider for use with within your uh, single sign on to access other resources so this sso enhances the usability by uh, reducing the password fatigue it also provides better security by decreasing the potential attack surface an identity provider can facilitate connections between uh, cloud computing resources and users that decreasing the need for user to reauthenticate when they are using mobile and roaming application there are some common uh, identity providers or identity protocol you can say that is your open id provider that is open id connect is an authentication protocol that is based on your uh, oath protocol like in your office 365 in your microsoft this is a oath protocol that is used to uh, you know uh, uh, validate your identity and this you can consider as a identity as a, a control plane you can say so first we should probably uh, having the answer that what is this control panel is all about so this control plane you can say is a term that has been used for years within the network this you can take it as a part that route your network traffic around the network architecture so a control plane is a tool or a service that direct access to uh, resources which is based on a specific criteria so when it comes to solution in today's world the user in the is a right place to check for the access and this set up identity as a control plane with a many networks devices and application needed in your day daily uh, daily basis daily businesses the only common denominator is the user correct now this is why we say that identity is a control plane it is critical you know to establish who the user is as the core of the trust for other transaction so if we are not sure who the user is no other system access control or security matters 
So once we are sure that yes, this is a user, so we can explicitly verify every element of access, whether our resources are on premises, in cloud host, or managed by third party services. So the first part about the identity that is done. Now we are heading towards the next part that is identity administration concept. Anyone any questions so far? Okay. Now let's understand some administration concept. Now administration, so there is a some concept that we are going to understand like under there is a ad provision and deprovision. So this provision and deprovisions are actually two separate capability. Provisioning that is speak toward how identity objects are created within a system and deprovisioning focus on the removal of an identity from having any accesses. It's just like, for example, when a user joined to any organization. So this cycle is start from that joining. Let's like say this is a user who have joined the organization. And at that time, we create the identity. OK, so let's say we are creating the identity. OK, well, the identity is created. You are going to give him some roles. OK, now when the role is provided, it may be that after some time his role is going to be changed. OK, he may be switched to any other department. His project is changed. He may be getting promotion and all. Now it may be after some time he is going to leave your organization. He is going to exit from the organization. So every time when there is a change into the user role and all. Whatever the responsibility, whatever the access you are providing to them, it is provision. There is a provision and deprovision for the same. The time you are giving the role, you are taking back the role. If you are taking any user like let's say you are working with a user who are working on a project. Let's say the project time period is for five years. During that five year, how is role and responsibilities are changed? OK, then finally one day the project is done. Now whatever the role and responsibility you have given to the user, you have to deprovision for the same. Then the identity updates. So identity updates it basically surround how your identity information is updated throughout the environment. So the idea is to move away from a manual efforts to a more automated and streamlined about. So it should be something like that in place of manually giving him some access and taking it back. It should be something automated. OK, like after some time, after some uh, hours, the access should be taken back. OK, or it's something like I have provided the access to any group. And if a user is a part of that group, he is joining the group automatically the access is provided. And when he is going to exit the group, whatever the rules and responsibility are there, it will be taken back. The synchronization speaks toward ensuring that identity system within an environment are up to date with the latest identity information. And this information is often you know, crucial for um, uh, determining the accesses of the user. And the key thing is that the impact of this capability is how synchronization is performed, whether it is manual, it is time based or event driven. Then the very important thing that is your password management, because as a user, you know, every uh, user would like to keep a password that is easy to remember, <laughs> right? This is what the fact like if I want that my memory is really not so good and I easily forget the password. 
So what I can do that I can choose an easy password or it may be for in each and every application everywhere I will be using the same password. OK, the one complex password is remembered to me and I'm going to use the same password everywhere, <laughs> right? This is what you know every human beings do. They, they choose uh, their date of birth, any family member name and something all that. So this password management is having the capability that focus and that on where and how this password and are set throughout the identity infrastructure. So most of the organization, the service desk is, is still the focus point for forgotten password. So people just keep on just, you know, uh, asking with their administrator that please help me. Please uh, look into my password. I have forgot my password. <clears throat> Or it may be like uh, your password uh, may be compromised, so you want to change the password. So you can manage that like uh, uh, giving the self service password reset. OK, so if I feel like that I need to change the password, I should be able to do that. OK, or you can as as administrator, you can set for the complex password. You can keep some password as a default password and uh, uh, all the employees should not be able to use that password. You can make that password expire like after some time the password will be expired and user need to set the new password so that all capabilities can be done. Then coming to the group management. Group management is going to help you out to uh, manage and organize your groups within the environment. Groups are like a very good way or the common form of determining the accesses and permission. Like let's say I have a group of or you know 10 people and I want to like assign them a access. So in place of giving access to one by one to each individual better, I will be creating a group and I will assign the role to that group. And then I will be adding my user to that group. So automatically these users will be having that role or responsibility or the access that I have provided to that particular group. So this is again, you know, the better way to manage your users, accesses and all. Then you have application and title management that focus on how identities are granted access to the application. It basically focus on providing the course uh, application and tit title management that has enforcing the capability contained within the authorization. This is just like you have the application and the users you are giving or allowing them to use that particular application or who are entitled to use that application. User interface uh, capability. This focus on how your end user is able to request or make or update to their identity information. In many environments, these users continue to contact to the service desk for any or all the updates of their identity information. Then there is a change control. So this change control capability focus on how these changes flow through the environment whether manually completed or by your service desk professional. Or if there is a automation with or without the workflow, which drives the change processes. Some organization they still, you know, have practice to send the emails to complete the requests within uh, while other have, you know, that much uh, mature processes to giving the reminder or to, uh, you know, giving the automated mail and so on. You can manage the automation within your PowerShell or even your CLI. So when picking up the right tool, you can consider your past experience and your current work environment. So here if you work primarily with the Linux system and all, so Azure's DLI feel more natural. And uh, if you work primarily with your Windows system, you can use Azure PowerShell. That is a natural fit for your organization. Microsoft Graph. This exposes the REST API 
and your client libraries to access that data on uh, Microsoft Cloud services such as your Microsoft Intra ID, Microsoft 365 services, Microsoft devices and many other control. Microsoft Intra verified ID. So those who have worked with Azure AD, they uh, will find this Intra verified ID as a new member of the Intra family. That was not earlier the part of Azure AD, but now here it's a new family member of Intra. So this Intra is what uh, that is a verified identity concept where uh, you can take it like, for example, uh, you are going to earn the Microsoft certification. OK, like let's say this is a SE 300 certification. So who is going to verify this is the correct or this is the you know right certification that you have achieved? So behind the scene, there is a Microsoft who is verifying that yes, you are an authorized user to hold this certification. Similarly, for organization, there is a verified identity concept use. Let's say my organization. OK, and uh, uh, my organization is, for example, it is synergetic. OK, now my organization is, uh, you know, giving me some uh, privileges and all. There is a company XYZ or let's take it as a ABC. Now employee of all the synergetic when they have to purchase anything on this ABC uh, company's portal, I will be getting some discounts. OK, so when I'm going to, you know, log into ABC portal, how I'm going to prove that I'm the employee of Synergetic. So my Synergetics is going to verify that yes, Komal, please allow Komal to use this, uh, you know, discount rate and all because she is the authorized user of my company. So this is basically the intra verified identity concept that organization are using to verify their identities, verify the employees identity so that they can use this identity and can be used anywhere. Wherever they have to use their organization identity. Same is like commonly used like we are using Aadhaar card. We are using PAN card as an identity. Right when we visit to uh, airport or when we have to, you know, purchase any property and also everywhere we are using our Aadhaar card. Why Aadhaar card is, is our identity? Because my government, this is provided by my government and my government is verifying that yes, Komal is holding this Aadhaar card and she is what the citizen of this country. This is what similarly the organization, they are using this concept to verify the identity of their uh, employees. Now let's understand the identity and access management solution. So identity solution, this control the access to an organization application and data. Users, devices, applications, they all are identities. So this IAM concept, this is identity and access management concept is support the authorization and authentication of these and other identities. So the process of automation, sorry, authentication, it controls who and what uses the account. This authorization control what the user can do in the application, whether you are just starting to evaluate the identity solution, or looking to expand the implementation. Azure offers many op uh, options to you. Let's say one example is Microsoft Intra ID. That is a cloud service and that provide identity management and access control capability. So to decide on a solution, start by learning about these services and other Azure component tool. OK. So coming to the identity as uh, Microsoft Intra ID architecture and term. So you need to have a subscription for the same. So those organization who are having E3 or E5 licenses or the valid licenses, they would be able to use the Intra and there you, they can start managing their identities. 
so here on the it is on the subscription basis where you have to pay over the time for services and and features now coming to the tenant tenant is a digital representation of your organization like in my case it is a synergetic so my organization tenant name is synergetic that in your organization it may be uh, it may be contoso it may be essential okay it may be cap gemini so that is your tenant so whenever you are purchasing the license your entra is having a tenant then identity so as we have discussed identity is what the users uh, identity may be a device so how you are creating the identities or manage managing the identities account account is nothing account is an identity that has data associated with it like for example entra of course this komal sharma there is a identity but there must be account with the name komal sharma which gives the detail komal sharma and what is his department what is her department name what is her designation what is her address what is her contact number what is her email id so contact is having all the information about that identity coming to the user user is the person who is holding that identity or account like in my organization i am the user i am the komal sharma and komal sharma is holding this identity is having a identity in the organization and holding the account where all the information about the komal sharma is there it is available right anyone any question so far what is the use of graph see graph basically it offers you a single endpoint that provides you the access like how you are you know able to get the insight in your microsoft cloud including your microsoft 365 windows 10 or the data okay this is the single point that you are getting the information I hope Manish, it is clear. Okay, so guys, let's take a break. Okay, we'll come back after the break and discuss few more concepts related with the identity.
Hello everyone, I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Thank you and more for the response. What about others? Can you please quickly show me thumbs up if you are there? Yes, Manish, do you have any doubt? You can put into the chat box. I think you have put uh, about the zero trust principle slide. OK, no worries, Manish, I will let you know. Uh, just let me check which flight uh, slide it was. I think this is what the slide you were looking for, right? So Manish, yes, what you wanted to know, like Zero trust, as I have explained, zero trust is what this concept says that don't trust anyone. Like when we are working, working virtually, I do not know anyone face to face, right? So how I'm going to trust anyone? So how I'm going to allow anyone? It may be that may be, uh, you know, someone else who is trying to use your identity. Like right now, I can only see the name Manish Parekh, but I do not know whether behind this name there is a really my real person who is holding the identity of Manish Parikh or is it any fake user who is you know attending the session with the name of Manish? So it may be that Microsoft says that don't trust anyone, just verify everyone. So how you are going to verify? By proving your identity, right? By uh, authenticating, by giving the proper authorization, right? So you have authenticated yourself and then as per the authorization, I'm giving you the access. You may be having a, 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 a like user administrator role. You must be having an admin application administrator role or you are only a user in my organization. So depend upon your role and accesses, you are you know able to access the resources on the cloud because as Microsoft has says that you have to assume breach and you have to be always ready with a you know with a breach with the uh, threats and all. So for that you have to always make sure that your users devices are always secure data information are always encrypted. Anything else Manish you are looking for? Most welcome. OK, coming to the next slide. So now let's understand what is business to business. What is Azure business to business? So Azure business to business. So this concept is like uh, to managing your external identities. OK, so this external identity is that refer to all the ways that you can uh, securely interact with users that is outside to your organization, right? That may be your partner, that may be your uh, vendors, your uh, suppliers, distributors, OK? And you would uh, be able to, you know, share the resources, uh, some information that basically B2B allow you to securely get connected with your external users. For example, you are a developer, OK, and you are creating some uh, consumer facing application and you can manage your customer's identity experience. With your external identities, your external user can bring their own identity. Let's say you are uh, like you are a, a, a employee of Contoso, OK, and I'm employee of Synergetic. Now I have to share some information with you guys with uh, some resources and I want to allow you to use the resources of Synergetic. Now in that case, I need to allow you securely so that as 
again the fund of zero trust i as you are my partner and all or supplier but i do not uh, uh, trust you so whenever you are trying to get connected with my organization resources you need to prove your identity and in my organization i have to manage external identity so that whenever they try to get connect this connection should be totally secure okay and plus i am not going to create the identity but i will allow them to bring their own identity let's say they are using uh, contoso id so when they are trying to get access to synergetic they will be using contoso id only not the synergetic they may be having some gmail id any other social media account so this concept allow your external user to bring their own identity coming to microsoft entra c to c a microsoft entra c to uh, sorry b to c so b to c concept uh, this uh, basically provide business to consumer identity as a service so your customer they use their preferred uh, preferred social enterprise or local account identities to get single sign on access to your application and apis Microsoft Entra B to C is a, a customer identity access management solution that is also known as CIAM. This is capable of supporting millions of users and billions of authentications per day. It take care of uh, the scaling and safety of the authentication platform, monitoring, and automatic automatically just handling threats like denial of service. password spray and brute force attack microsoft entra b2c is a separate service from your entra id and it is built on same technology as microsoft entra id but for a different purpose now coming to microsoft 365 using microsoft entra id So Microsoft Entra ID uh, that is used by Microsoft 365 service to manage their users identity behind the scene. So as you guys in your organization even must be having the identity you all are users you are using uh, working for your organization maybe you are visiting your organization or a sub, some of you must be working from home but you are working for your organization you are collaborating with other user you are working as a group sharing the same resources sharing the same information sharing the same application and so on but for you know consuming or working for office 365 services it is very important for organization to having a tool so that they could manage all the users like in real world like we were having administrators these admins used to manage the users their accesses right and now here on cloud we have microsoft entra id to manage the users create their identities create and working for their accesses there are some organization they are still using uh, adds that is uh, active directory domain services and for cloud there is microsoft entra id so microsoft uh, sorry this uh, active directory domain services this is enterprise ready lightweight directory access protocol and this is a server basically that provide the key features such as identity and authentication computer object management and group management this adds you can take it as a central component in many organization with an on premises it environment and provide core user account authentication and computer management feature Yes, Manish. Any doubt you have, you can put into the chat box.
how is how uh, out acha how about federation i am coming to that part manish okay so this is edidia server so here like here uh, i will just give you the overview of edds let me share that link now microsoft entra id microsoft entra is a cloud based identity okay so this cloud based identity and the mobile device management that provide user account and authentication service for the resources such as microsoft 365 and azure portal or your saas application and microsoft entra id can be synchronized with your uh, on premises adds environment to provide a single identity to user that work natively in the cloud so when i will be taking to the part where i will be discussing about the hybrid identity management i will be discussing what are the different other like uh, uh, method for working with a hybrid concept there we will be discussing about the federation server and all right now you just have to understand that azure ad domain services that is your on premise identity management and this uh, entra domain service that manage your identity on cloud coming to the licensing part a license you can take it as a purchase agreement and this agreement allow a user or a group of user to use a, a microsoft technology okay like let's say uh for example your organization has purchased p1 or p2 licenses for entra or uh in my organization let's say they have purchased e3 or e5 licenses so when you purchase a license so along with license you get some services a bundle of services and whatever the license is assigned to the user accordingly he will be having accesses for the same let me show you this you can refer once here if you will scroll down you will be having a good idea about the entra id licenses okay so generally when we purchase a uh, office 365 license we have like along with e3 and e5 we have the entra id p2 license okay but if you want to take it as a add on it is available generally microsoft entra is free of course available with any azure account or any office 365 licenses but this free account is having of course some limitation If you will scroll down here, you have different services that are, uh, you know, included as a bundle of the services, like for the authentication, single sign-on, and application accesses. Ah, uh, like the cloud authentication, it is available with your free licenses, and the password hash and pass through. These facilities is available. Group assignment to the application is not available in free, and there are some premium services. including the security part and all so just go through with these licenses type of the licenses like this is coming to the identity protection okay so under identity protection you can create the policy for sign in risk and user risk then uh, setting up the authentication uh, condition access this is applicable only for the premium licenses p2 licenses okay so you can just refer this link
So that was about the identity concept. Now we are heading towards the next part that is authentication and authorization. Anyone any questions so far related with identity and identity concepts? OK, so I will take it as a no. OK, so let's understand about the authentication and authorization. So authentication is what to validate your identity to prove yourself that you are an authorized user or you are really the authenticated user. So this authentication like uh, first there is a convenience when I'm talking about the authentication. The first time is the convenience. So convenience capability is basically focus on the end user experience with how they are prompted for authentication credentials. It focuses here on the end user experience. Coming to the source. This source capability is surrounds where the user obtain their authentication token from. So many organization they have uh, what they believe. You know as a centralized uh, issuer that is your uh, active directory. But in reality, most organization also have their identity repository. Coming to protocol. So there are organization they have, you know, variety of authentication protocols in place, which cause, you know, difficult experience to for both your end user and the organization. So the uh, focus area of uh, this capability is to help organization to one or more like modern secure authentication protocol to accomplish their authentication goal. Coming to the assurance. Authentication assurance, you can take it as a confidence and organization has that an individual accessing a resources is who, what they say they are. And this capability talks about whether or not an organization uses shared account. If they use personalized account and if solutions such as multi-factor authentication or risk based authentication are in place. Now coming to the federated identity concept. This federation identity concept, you can take it as a collection of domains that have established trust. OK, and the level of trust may vary. So behind the scene, basically there are federation servers. OK, so here there is a SAML that is security assertion markup language that is used. It is an open standard for exchanging authentication and authorization data between an identity provider and a service provider. As a web service federation, an identity specification from web service security framework to provide your single sign on via external identity exchange and authentication. An open ID connect. It extend the oath authorization protocol for use as an authentication protocol so that you can do single sign on using oath. Then coming to claim based identity in Microsoft Entra. There is an ID token that is used in your open ID connect token used to authenticate a user. There are other uh, uh, topics on claim based authentication like your JSON web token, claim, assertion, attribute or augmentation. Now coming to the authorization. Once the authentication is set, now there is an important point for the authorization that how like for which service you are authorized to use. That may be any application, any group, any information and here there is a role of your entitled management. Now entitled basically focus 
whether or not an identity has been granted or can say as an entitled access to a particular resource. Such as entitlements, uh, they are handled using many different types. The application of entitlement may happen at application level. Why a group? Right defined that is defined through uh, your role based access control or attribute. Access policies. Access policies are basically focus on whether or not an organization has uh, standardized or published access policy in place. Whether or not those policies are written enforce per application, but certainly enforce or certainly enforce with assistation. And the last is the enf enf uh, enforcement. So this capability focus on how an organization handle the enforcement of authentication, sorry, authorization. In most cases, organization handle enforcement at the application layer, which ultimately is completed by an API within the application itself. A centralized identity provider is especially useful for applications that have uh, users located around the globe who do not have, you know, necessarily sign in from the enterprise network. So your modern identity platform authenticates users and provides security tokens such as your access token, refresh token and ID tokens. Security tokens allow a client application to access the protected resources on a resource server and these access token. This is a security token you can say that is issued by an authentication server that is as a part of O2. And it contains information about the uh, user, uh, then information about the target resources and then ID tokens. Um, ID tokens that is basically sent to your client application as a part of your open ID connect flow. They can be sent along with or instead of an access token. And these ID token are used by client to authenticate the users. Then you have your re uh, refresh token. This refresh token like because access tokens are valid only for a short time period, right? So authentication server will sometime issue a refresh token at the same time the access token is issued. Now the client application can then exchange this refresh token for a new access token when it is needed. These are some common authorization approach. That is your access control list, role based access control. Then you have attribute based access control and policy based control. Like you can, uh, you know, have the uh, list of resources. You can directly go to the resource and provide the access to the particular resource. Resource uh, can be on the role that you are having. Like, for example, I am creating a new role, OK, a custom role, and I'm giving some accesses to that role. And when I'm assigning this role to any user, that user will be having the set of these accesses along with that role. Then it may be some attribute based uh, access that may be one or more, uh, you know, based on the attributes. Like, for example, if user is from uh, Mumbai country or if I uh, sorry, if user is from India country or if user is from uh, marketing department, uh, if user is is uh, is uh, uh, is holding, uh, uh, for example, uh, it may be based on the uh, uh, address. It may be based on the department. It may be based on a group. So whatever the attributes as a user you are holding, according to that attribute, you are provided that accesses. Then coming to the policy. So you can create the custom policies, control, you know, conditional access policies. You can create a sign in policies. So you can 
give the authorization as per the access role base attribute or the policy base. Now let's discuss about the auditing and other identity concept. Before moving ahead, do you have any question related with the authorization? Anyone any question so far related with the authorization? When I will be giving you the demo, the things will be more clear to you guys. OK, should I take it as a like no, no doubt? Can you all show me thumbs up if it all clear what I have discussed till this topic? So I think identity is discussed. Identity is covered. Then authorization and authentication. Yes, Devraj, you have raised your hand. Any question you have, you can put into the chat box. OK, OK, thank you so much Devraj for the response. What about others? Can you all please show me thumbs up if all clear? Vivek, Piyush, Bhaskar, Sandeep, Deepak, Ashwin, all clear? OK, so guys, I just want this <laughs> session should be more interactive. Uh, when I'm asking something, I request you all to please respond to me. OK, or if you have any doubt, feel free to uh, raise your hand or feel free to put your query into the chat box. OK, I will be answering you for the same. And don't worry, I will be giving you the demo for all the topics that I have just discussed. OK, and then the things will be more clear. OK, now coming to the auditing part see auditing in in like in term of your uh, you know uh, administration as an administrator it is very important for you to keeping an eye on the uh, what is going on in your organization what is the excesses that identities are having what they are doing with the resources and all that is there in your organization so this identity you can take it as a collection uh, where uh, within your audit pillar focuses on how your organization uh, collect the auditing data regarding all the ex expects like identity life cycle, whenever identity is created, any uh, whenever there is an update, if the password is changed, any accesses on our application or the resources, any approval, okay, whether any accesses is granted, removed, or changed, it all will be locked okay now access logging access login is what this focus on the type of access login the organization does do you collect like a uh, growth uh, course uh, trained access information fine drained access information or both Then change login. Change logging means whenever anything is changed, when a, whether like your access is changed, your role is changed. It is general capturing your information about identity changes request, whether or not organization capture that information. There are several aspect of changing logging typical consider. The request itself, like I'm a user, I have requested that please change my address, okay, or change my name or change my uh, role, OK? So that all will be looked. So it basically focus with this uh, with it, uh, with this capability to identify that what information in your organization captures regardless of the change, any change to that identity, what type of information they need to uh, like uh, in order to meet their audit demands. Then alerting. Alerting is what like while alerting is operational it is important aspect of any identity service altering basically uh, sorry alerting is basically focus on whether you are uh, or not mechanism are in place to notify someone that should a configuration to be non compliant or if any unauthorized access has been granted or uh, 
something like has happened to so alerting will as a administrator. You can get the alert for the same. Then reporting methodology. It focus on what processes the organization used to generate the audit reports for identity or identify within their environment. So how does organization create a report? So whether uh, like when an organ author uh, asks them to provide one, OK, so it is written process basically to manually collect the data or is there a solution in place which take the compliance or generate the routine, uh, you know, routine reports and all. Coming to the reporting type. Reporting type focus on what type of reports the organization generate and this assume that there is some level of reporting methodology in place. Type of report includes like any common reporting or kind of any change or historical. It may be like uh, on a specific uh, industry or specific report type. So what does the organization have today and what is needed in order to achieve your business goal and objective? So while report, when you have your identity solution built, you have to audit the activities. So organization of all the sizes are constrained by their available resources like there may be financial people or time based to achieve an effective return on investment. They must provide prioritize whether they will invest or implementation of security across your organization. It also constrained by this. So to achieve an appropriate ROI on security, the organization need to first understand and define the security priorities. Now when you are trying to monitor. Monitoring and diagnostic. These two are crucial for availability and resiliency. If someone or something fails, you need to know what is failed, why it is failed and when it was failed. So monitoring is not the same as failure detection. For example, like let's say your your application that might detect a trans uh, like some error and retry or avoiding the downtime, but it should also log and retry the operation. So the first thing is that you are just going to monitor. So monitoring service may be Azure monitor that can be used. Application insight, Azure service health, resource health, resource manager or resource Azure policies. Coming to the cryptography. Cryptography, you can take it as a process where you are converting your information or data in a way that other person should not be able to. Read it. So when a sender who is sending the information from one place to another. In between the information can be attacked, you know, some unauthorized person may be trying to leak the information. So this uh, encryption will make uh, your you know uh, text in a way that it will be converted in a zipper text. OK, it will be in a code in a kind of a coded form. And the another person would not be able to <coughs> read that for information. And once it is properly transmitted at the another side, the receiver who is going to receive the information is going to use the password. OK, to use the information. So as he is the authorized person, so then automatically the information will be encoded. And the user or the receiver would be able to read the information. So this till this topic we have discussed zero trust. Why identity is used and some identity concept like authentication is discussed authorization. Auditing and administration. And under identity design, we have discussed about the decentralized identity, business to business, and business to consumer. We have also discussed some other identity concept, token and claim based identity, 
यूजर अकाउंट सब्सक्रिप्शन क्रिप्टोग्राफी लाइसेंसिंग सो नो गाइज लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द लैब एंड विल एक्सप्लोर द थिंग्स दैट आई हैव डिस्कस्ड for that let me take you to my trial environment for identity and access management you need to log in to entra.microsoft.com so here under entra the first when you are going to log in you will be having the information about entra okay you can have some quick navigation like if you would and would directly go to tenant overview or all the users all the group you will be having all the information like if i want to go to tenant overview i will click on it so here right now you can see this is the tenant information this is the tenant id tenant name is komal chm that i have uh, created this tenant with this name this is the primary domain komal chm dot on microsoft dot com in your case it may be contoso dot com synergetic dot com so this is your primary domain and when a user identity is created at the end it uses the primary domain like let's say in my organization i'm using komal at the is synergetic.com okay so when you actually uh, uh, you know uh, configure the tenant on microsoft entra you need to first you know manage the tenant over there and a primary domain is created this is the default uh, domain that is used if you have a custom domain like custom domain means you have purchased a domain so in that case you can use that domain and all the identity will be created with the same here i can see i have microsoft entra id p2 license so there we have discussed three licenses free p1 and p2 so p1 and p2 these two are the primary uh, sorry that uh, premium licenses you can say and the p2 is the most premium one where you have uh, you know security concept like you can create the condition access policy you can create the identity protection and so on so these features are available with the p2 licenses and here you can see i have uh, the users group number of your groups applications and devices let's say if i have to start working with the users and the first thing that i am trying to do that is creating a user in my tenant so for that here under identity you can see i have the overview first so this is the overview coming to the users i have all users so here you can see the list of all the users that is there in my uh, tenant okay let's say if you have to create a new user at the top you will notice i have a option to create a new user i will click on it now here i have to write the user principal name so the principal name is what the user name like if it is um, for example pradeep so i will write pradeep over there okay like let's say i am going to create a new user that is the name is i will make it test
SC 300. OK, so it says that already this username is available. Test new user. So this user principal name, it should be unique that you have to take it like the email ID that we are using. It is always unique. Now the display name, display name I'm giving. Test. New user. Now coming to the password. Right now it is giving me the default password. This is the auto generated password. See as a administrator when you are uh, creating a new user. OK, so here. Of course, like um, we are concerned about the user identity and security. So whenever user is trying to log in, he need to reset his password immediately. OK, so whatever the password you are using, like let's say I want to use the default password. I have copied it. And I will paste it somewhere. OK, so this is the default password that I have pasted. So that the same password you can share it later on with your with your user. Now, if you want to use any auto generated like you a default password, so you can uncheck that. OK, and you can write there default password. Let's say I'm using a default one. So it says that the new password must not be weak or commonly used. So I will better click on auto generated password. And only this I will keep with me. And every time it is going to generate a new password. So once it is done. You can go to the properties. The under properties. You can just write the detail of this user like let's say first name, last name, user type. User type you can add it as a member or guest. Now there are some other attributes that like the job information, contact information. OK. Here you have a user's location. I can write India. Any other personal detail if you want like let's say. Job position. HR manager. Employee type let's say if it is a part time or full time. So once it is done. Click on the next tab. That is for assignment. So this we will be coming later. This is about the assignment of any group or any role if you want to give. Let me click on review and create. Here you can have a review display name, nickname and so on. So that's done. So my user is created. Let me find it out. So here I have this new user. Test new user created. Let me click on it. So here I can see the test new user. Detail is created. OK. Let me copy this detail. And now let me just try whether I can sign in with this name or not.
So I will use office.com. Now it is asking the password, so I am using the password. Okay. Now immediately that user is asked to change the password to update the password. Now I will use current password. Now new password that employee has to set immediately when he is trying to log in for the first time. OK, so it says see I was trying to use a password PASSWRD, so it says that we have seen that password too many times before chooses. So now I have to <laughs> choose a something hard password. So let me retry. My password is updated. OK, so now there are some other information that can be used to Keep this secure account secure like let's say uh, later on if you are trying to set up uh, the multi factor authentication and so on. So that time you need to have some you know uh, mobile number from the user and so on. So right now if you want you can skip the setup that you can do later. So this is the welcome screen that you are getting. And now here you can see this user is able to log in successfully the new user that I have just created. Now let's try the access of this user. So I will go to intra. OK, so now here let's see. Um, will check whether this uh, user is able to uh, you know create a new application or not so here under application enterprise application and now here you can see this option create your own application it is not enabled because this user is just created and this user does doesn't have any access even if you go back and check for other application, no, he do not have any other application available because currently this user do not have any license or this user currently do not have any accesses for the same. So now let's first try that how we can assign a application role to the user. 
so if you remember we were trying about or uh, uh, we i have explained about the uh, authorization and authentication so this time authentication is done okay user is uh, you know uh, authenticated himself that he is what the authorized uh, sorry the uh, the correct user his account is created he has used the password and he is trying to log in but what about the authorization he is not authorized to use any application or not even uh, authorized to do anything on the entra so for that now I will go back to Entra as my admin account. Let's just assign a role to this user. So for that, uh, here under this uh, test user account, under manage, I have this option to assign the role. Now you can click on add assignment. Now you can select the role. So I will be selecting this application administrator. We'll click on next. And here I will make him active. This assignment is active. And we'll click on assign. Let's just wait for a few seconds till the time this X is assigned to him. Yeah, so now I can see <clears throat> this role is assigned to this user and now he is an application administrator. Now let's just check whether uh, this user is able to use this role or not. Coming back. Let me quickly refresh. His login. Now I'm back to my test new user account. You can check at the top. Coming to the application. Under enterprise application. I will click for new application and here you can see that. Yes, now I am able to create a new application and this option is enable. OK, so now this user is able to create the application. Now let's say as I was discussing about the user uh, identity life cycle. So when an identity is created, it may be that after some time his role or responsibility is changed. OK, so currently like I have assigned him the role of application administrator, but later on after some time this role is no more required. Then you need to take this access or role back from this user. So for that you need to remove this role assignment. So to do so, I will go back. And here. For assigning the role. I will go to. Under. Um, Need to go to roles. Yeah, here under roles and admins, I will click for roles. 
Now I will search for application administrator. So this is the application administrator. And here I can see that this is the test new user. OK. He is assigned this role. Now I will click on it. OK, and I can see this role is assigned to this user from this day to this date. OK, and here I have the option to remove this. So I will click on remove. Yes, confirm. OK, so it says that I have just activated this role and it's like at least we need to wait five minutes to remove the same and then after that I would be able to delete that. Minimum required is five minutes. No, no problem. We'll come back to this portion later and I will show you how we can remove the same. But here under uh, active assignment, if I click on this role, no, I will go to roles. Under application administration, I will go to the user where I have provided this role. Here you will be having the information that started and ended. If you want to edit any, anything, if you want to update anything, so you can click on update. And here you can make the changes like let's say you do not want to make uh, this assignment assigned for permanently. So you can untick, uncheck that. If you want to make this like not active but eligible. So active and eligible, the difference is that when it is active means user is assigned this role permanently. There is no start or ending date, but if you want, you can control the limit. Though you are making him active, but you are not assigning this role permanently. You can decide the end date or starting date. For example, uh, you need to add a user for this role uh, let's say for six months only he required this role. It may be that he is a part of any project and he need to work for that. So in that case, I am not see guys. It is very risky to assign any role permanently. Right? You have to make sure that uh, unless and until he is a global administrator or he is really required that role to permanently, you know, manage that. Do not ever assign any role permanently there. You can do one thing. You can just assign it role for a particular time period. It can be like for one year for six months. After that you can ask you know you, you can just renew that uh, the assignment. But never ever permanently assign. OK, now when the assignment role is decided like let's say assignment end date is. Let's say it is. Uh, September OK, I'm September. And here I'm just putting test and click on save. Now this role is activated whenever you want. You can use that, but for six months only. Now there is one more information. Do you want to activate this role or do you want to make him eligible? Now the difference is that when he is eligible. This role is assigned, but it is not by 24 by 7. It is availability. Whenever he is using this role, he need to ask for the permission. That is again the different uh, setting you need to make that when you are making him eligible for the same, you can control the access for four hours. You can make the limit for two hours. OK, like let's say. In my organization, I have a user administrator. User administrator is going to manage my users. Let's say uh, whenever my employees are having any trouble, like let's say someone forget the password or he need to change the password. He need to ask 
with the administrator to change the password. Now to changing the password. I need the access for let's say one hour is enough. OK, or let's say two hours is enough. That's it. So I will be giving this role. OK, just for two hours. It is not required for 24 by 7. So that you have to choose. Do you want to make him eligible? Or you want to make him active for that particular role? If it is active, it will be 24 by 7. If it is eligible, you can again control that the access, whether it should be uh, like, you know, asking for the permission or controlling it for a particular time period, and then automatically it will be revoked. OK, now I will again try to remove the access. OK, so let's move ahead. We'll try to remove this role later. Now here as we have just added a user. Now let's say right now I have added one user at a time. OK, but it may be that you have a requirement to add 100 users, 200 users, thousand of user. So how you are going to add one by one all the user? It will be taking lots of time. Right, so the better idea is that to bulk add the user. So when you are creating a new user, you have an option for the bulk where you can create bulk user. Let me click on bulk create. Now here you have a CSV file that you need to download. OK, so this is the file, right? So in this file, you can see there is a name of the user principal like lights. This is the example. See, you can see the example data is given to you. OK, like you have to write the name of the user. User principal name, the password that you are going to set. Block sign in job title, department, users, location. So you can prepare the sheet of your users, the list of the users, and when it is created. After that, you can just go and upload this file. Click on the file, browse your file and update that. And you will notice that all the users that are listed in your CSV file will be added to your directory right in my directory as it's a trial account so i cannot add the users more than 25 so but in your case if you have a test uh, account you can test it out and you can try to add the user in bulk anyone any questions so far Should I take it as a no? OK. So now let's understand like when you have created a user. For example, that life cycle is completed. OK, that identity life cycle is completed. Let's say uh, that user has left your organization. Now it is then it is very important that immediately you are going to remove the user from your directory. So in that case, for example, I have created a user that is my test user. OK. This is my test new user. I will be selecting it. And here at the top, I have an option to delete that. I will click on delete. Now the user is available into the deleted user. The user is now deleted from your all user list. If I try to search. No, it's not available. 
right now it may be that sometime it happens that by mistake you have deleted a user so in that case you can go under manage you have a list of all the deleted users and this deleted user list is available for 30 days and within that 30 days you can you know restore that user again to your directory so for that you can click on that user and at the top you have option to restore that right just click on it restore okay we'll go back and check So I have my user back. OK, and if even I can check to my user account. I can see that again this user is available and he is able to log in. Now, as you have noticed that OK, this user is created, but he do not have any licenses. He do not have any application to use. So in this case, the mean is that user doesn't have any active license. So to check that. You can go to that user account. And if I go to uh, licenses, see right now this test new user is available. I can go to licenses. I can see no, there is no licenses assigned to this user. So now you can assign a new license to the user. I will click on plus. And here I have all the available license in my organization. OK, so for this user, let's say I will be assigning this Microsoft 365 E5 developer. I will be using this and here you will notice at the right side all the um, uh, available, you know, application I can assign to the user. And again here as an administrator, if you want to, you know, to restrict user for the particular application. Like let's say I do not want my user to use Yammer. I do not want to use them, you know, a customer key or or any other application. So I can just uncheck. Like let's say I do not want them to use bookings. I do not want to use allow him to use uh, Entra P1. OK, so you can just check it out and then finally you can click on save. So let's just check it out whether this user is having that license or not. So here right now in uh, the license list, this license is available to the user. OK. Now let's just test it out that whether now user is able to use this license or not. So as I, as I have explained, this license is what is having the set of, you know, some permissions, some applications. So when I'm assigning the license to all the services and application that comes as a bundle of this application of this licenses, it will be assigned to this user. Let me just click on refresh. See. Now I can see that here I am logging with this test user account. And here you can see I have all the applications. See. I have all the application now listed over there. Like Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And now user can use any of this application. Like let's say if you want to use uh, Outlook. Right, he is able to use that.
So user need to put the password. Okay, and now user is able to use other applications also. OK, it is not allowing. I think I have done some setting behind the scene because of that. OK, no problem, but user is able to use this application, but he need to set up his account to so that. I will show you later that how we can set up the account. When I will be explaining about the multi factor authentication. OK, so now here this license is assigned successfully to this user. Anyone any questions so far related with the labs or uh, that I have done? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, MFA topic I have not discussed yet. OK, right now I'm just discussing about the identities, creating the identities, managing the identities, managing the licensing and role that was what we have just discussed. And accordingly, I have given you the demo for the same. In my next module, I will be discussing about the MFA conditional access policies, set up the account for the same. So that time I will be covering this MFA. Is it OK, Sudarshan? OK, anyone else? Any questions so far? Uh, Sudarshan, that's what I said. I will be covering that part when I will be explaining about the MFA. So that time I will show you that how you can set up the account for the MFA. OK, because when you are going to set up the MFA, you need another factor of the authentication. You need to give the mobile number or you need to set up the multi factor authentication application. So that part will be included when I will be covering the MFA lab. OK. So let's move ahead and now we are going to explore other part that how we can work with the. Tenant properties. So for that you can go to overview. And here you have the tenant property. Under overview you have this property tab. OK, under property tab, you have the information about the, your uh, tenant. OK, so this is the name of the tenant you can see. If you want to change the right now, I am not going to make any changes because this is my trial environment. OK, so but if you want to make any changes, like if you want to change the notification language, any other technical content right now, the technical contact email is this one. If you want to change any technical contact, so that information can be changed and you can give the uh, you know email ID of any other technical uh, contact uh, information. OK, so that is about your uh, tenant. Information. This is the country and region like I am from India and when I have a set up the account, so that's why I am just getting this country or region. So this country and region is basically the region uh, where your uh, you know tenant is located from. Here you have this tenant ID. OK, so you know your Azure subscription have the trust relationship with your Microsoft Intra ID. So this Intra ID is uh, you know trusted to authenticate users, services, devices for the subscription. So each subscription they have a unique tenant ID associated with it. Whether you are using Microsoft 365 license or you have a Azure subscription. Both the cases you have 
Microsoft uh, Entra to be uh, you know used to be managed by your users and identity. Like if I uh, take you to my Azure portal. So basically, actually I'm using Azure portal with a different tenant. Uh, that is my. So this is my Azure portal, but here the account uh, this tenant is different. But if I take you to the Entra ID. So here the Entra ID is like this. The look and feel is a bit change. OK, so this Entra along with Azure subscription is change. Where uh, like if you separately go to Microsoft 365 license, so this Entra admin center is a bit change. Like here you have some other, you know, family member, as I said, verified identity, uh, permission management and so on. But other features that all you get in your uh, this one. Azure uh, portal. But here if you will notice I have other uh, domain. I have another tenant ID. OK, and with this Azure portal, I have Entra ID free access. I do not have premium license for the Entra. Got it, but whereas if I go back to my this Entra, this is my Office 365 license uh, along with it. So here I am having my Entra that is my, uh, you know, P2 licenses. So this is my Entra P2 licenses. OK, so. That's what about the training properties and the information. Now let me show you how we can uh, work in a group. So for that. Here you have under identities. You have groups. Let me click uh, on all group and here. I have the list of the group which is already available. OK, and if you have to create a new group, so for that. Click on new group. Mention the type of the group here. You have two type of group. Security group and Microsoft 365 group. So when I'm selecting Microsoft security group. Under security, I can give the name of my group. Like let's say. Uh, test security group. I can give the description. Now here you have two type of membership type. The one is assigned and second is the dynamic. Right now I'm selecting the assigned group. Here I can add the members here. If you have noticed one thing, so when I'm selecting the group type security. I do not get any email ID associated with this group. Right because as a security group, they are restricted for the communication or integration with the other groups or users. That's why when we are creating the security group, they are assigned the role and all, but they are not, you know, allowed for the integration. OK, the communication with other groups and all that's why the email ID is not provided. But on the another hand, if you want that group should be able to integrate with others. They should be able to, you know, collaborate work like all my team members. They are working on a same project. They need to share the information. They have the same file to work with. In that case, you can create the Office 365 group. And when you are selecting the Office 365 group or you can see the Microsoft 365 group here, you have an option to create a email ID also. So let me first show you the creation of security. So this is the security group I have created description.
Now, intra role can be assigned. So here you have an option. Do you want this group to assign the security role? If you want to make it yes, you can click on yes. OK, then this Microsoft intra role can be assigned to this group. If no, then role cannot be assigned. Now here you have a members. You can add the members to your group like let me add few users. Let me add this user, this user. Or I will be as looking for my test user that I have just created. This is my test user and will select. Three members are added. Do you want to select any owner also? So like I will be adding myself as a owner. And select. Let me click on create. So I have. Yeah, I have my group created test security group, right? The group type is security. Here you will notice whenever the group is added. There is a name of the group. This is the object ID and the group type. And then member type membership is what? Right now the group I have just created. So I was manually adding the member to that group. Here you have an option to select it dynamically, right? If you remember, I have explained that when you are creating a group, you can assign the membership dynamically. That can be based on the attribute. Let's say all the users who are from so and so department, they will be automatically added to that group. So you can use any of the attribute to create the dynamic group. Let me show you one dynamic group like here. I have this M365 group. OK. And right now group membership. Here you can see when I have created this dynamic group here. I had the dynamic rule which is working. OK, so users will be added dynamically as per the rule uh, that I have created over there. OK, now let's just try and create an Office 365 group. Let me go back to the groups. This time I will create a new group that will be the M365 group and I will give the name test. M365. Group. Group for. All. M365 users. Entra role can be assigned. Yes, it can be assigned. OK, I can do one thing. I will make it dynamic user. OK, so as I have selected dynamic user here, you will notice I do not have option to add the member, but here I have an option to add a dynamic query or you can take it as a rule. On the basis of my rule member will be automatically added. So now here I have this property where I will be creating the user. Like let's say if it is the job title. OK. Or it can be as per the user location or the usage location. Or it may be as per the. User type. Choose equal to and here you can write the. Uh, value what type of user OK or let's say if it is.
department. Okay, so let's say if the department is equal to let's say if it is HR. So whoever will be the part of HR department will be added to my this. Uh, um, uh, this uh, group that I have just created. OK, so once it is done here, you will notice under rule syntax, your new rule is added that user dot department equal to HR. Similarly, you can use, you know, any rule like property, select the property, select the operator equal to, uh, you know, uh, even uh, less than equal to contain or, uh, you know, greater than equal to must contain match. So any of the operator you can use to make your query. Once it is done, you can click on save. And click on create. Now let me search for group. I can see there is no user added. Because here now I need to check if any of the user who is from HR department. I do not know whether I have mentioned <laughs> department for any of my user or not. So let me just find out my new test user. And uh, if I can. Change the property of this user. And here job information. I will write department HR. Let me click on save. Now maybe uh, I have just changed this user uh, department. So will be the part of this group. Okay, no problem. We'll come back later and check. Because it says the dynamic rule processing status, it is succeeded. Add group, update the group. Yeah, so here can you see guys as this was a manually uh, I have not added this user manually to this group, but as I have mentioned the dynamic query that whoever the user is from the HR department will be added. So let's say if any of the user you are making him from the HR department will be automatically added to this group. So this is what you can work with the groups. You can create the group. OK, you can add the members. You can add the members, you know, manually you can select the member or you can make it dynamically. So when you want to make it dynamically, it would be easy for any administrator to manage the group. You know, you know, you don't have to manually just keep on adding the users and removing it from the particular group, but just create the query and automatically it will be added and removed from the group. As you might have noticed that when we were creating the, uh, you know, rule for the dynamic, you were having different options like any of the property, you know, any of the attribute that you can use. OK. Anyone any questions so far related with a group? Yes, guys, anyone any questions related with a group? What is this ACLS Mahindra? I couldn't get you.
access control list access control i will be covering later okay i will be covering that later <clears throat> Yes, dynamic uh, rule setup is respect to the group. Basically, you are creating a rule that on what basis user should be added to your group. OK, that's why it is a dynamic rule that you are setting up. It may be that you want to create a group. Whoever all the active users, they should be automatically added to the group. OK. So it can be like, for example, your uh, business is an international level. OK, or you may be uh, having, you know, the countries like user. You can make a group for all my country, uh, India country employee, US country employee and so on. So on that basis, even you can create a group. So just mention the rule as per the country, as per the location and so on. Anything else, guys? Any other questions so far? OK, so. So let's understand that how we can move ahead for that external collaboration. OK, so now I will show you the external collaboration setting. So for that we'll go to users, all users. And. Uh, here you have user setting under manage user setting. Under user setting. Um, yeah, here at the bottom, can you see external users and here I have option manage external collaboration setting. I will click on it. So now here you have all the options related with the external collaboration setting. Now here you have the setting like guest user access. Do you want to allow the guest user like uh, guest users have limited accesses to the properties and membership? Guest user have the same access as your members have or guest user is restricted to properties and membership of their own directory. Then coming to the next part that is guest invite setting. So do you want anyone in your organization to invite someone as a guest? Or only you want administrator to invite for a guest or you want to make a group of or the members few members only they will be allowed to add someone. So that setting you can make over there. Then this is the setting for uh, enabling your guest user for the self service password. OK. Now the self service password I will be coming back to this later. Then external user leave setting means do you want external user to remove themselves from your organization? Like they are not dependent on you. So this is what recommended that you should always allow them to leave the organization. And the last one is the collaboration setting that do though you want to you know collaborate with the external user or the guest user. So for that, do you want to allow invitation to any domain? Or you want to den uh, deny the invitation or only allow from the specific domain? So these all are the external collaboration setting that you can explore over there. So if you have done any changes, 
like for example under guest invite setting only user assigned to specific admin role just click on it and click on save so whenever you are making any changes make sure you have saved the changes properly Now once external collaboration setting is done, you can go and add the guest users. So if you want to add a guest user, if you will notice already I have few users, they are added as a guest user. Can you see that? I have few users added as a guest. OK, so for adding a new user as a guest, you can click on invite external user. You can write the email of that person like for example, I'm just using um, new at the rate gmail.com. My guest. This is just a normal email test email ID. You can use the email ID of your guest, of course, and here you have an option to send the invite message. If you want to write any message, you can write and click on review and invite. Now the invitation will be sent to your guest user. And he will be received a, 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 a invite a link via his email. And now here this user is added new guest. OK, to my. Entra. Here you have an option to invite all your guest user as a bulk, so there is a bulk option to bulk invite. Here the same way you were adding the new user by using the CSV template. You can download the CSV file template, update this template and upload it. So all the invitation will be sent as a bulk. OK, so that's it for about my first module. So now let's take a lunch break, have a lunch uh, and then after the break we are going to uh, you know discuss other topics and I will be giving you the demo. So the next uh, my agenda would be to uh, work with the multi-factor authentication or uh, the conditional access policies or identity protection and all. How do we configure guest access to team only in the organization? So see right now I have uh, you know displayed you how you can add the user to your directory to your entra. If you want to know about adding the user into your teams, I will share you the related link. OK, so you can refer this link. It is surely going to help you out to add the user to your teams. OK. Here are all the steps are written. That will even uh, you have, uh, you know, the images for the same. It will help you to add it as a guest user. OK, so let's take a break. It would be the break for 45 minutes. <laughs> 